In this video, I'm going to attempt to repair an issue with my Sony um, DA4ES. Um, this is at the heart of my family room entertainment system, and it's developed a problem over the last several months where after you first turn it on, um, you get a popping, popping sound. Um, and it's pretty loud and it's pretty annoying. And um, uh, I've also discovered I can make it do it by just tapping on the top here. So let's see what happens. You can probably hear it there. So we've got some issue inside. Hopefully maybe just a loose connection or a, a solder joint that's gone kind of goofy. So we're going to take this over to the bench and see if we can open it up and figure out what's going on. Well, the beast is on the bench. Um, it was no fun un unhooking all the cables from the back because quite a lot was hooked up to it. So let's just first verify that the problem still happens. I've got my bench speakers hooked up here and let's power it up and see what happens. At the moment, she's quiet. Oh, yep, there we go. Yep, something's definitely up, so time to open it up. To open up the case, there are six screws, two on the bottom of this side, two on the back, and two on the bottom of this side. So let's open this up and see if anything jumps out at us. see what we have to see here now other than some dust all right with the top open let's power it up and we'll uh, tap around a little bit and see if we can find anything that looks suspicious it probably would help to plug you back in again obviously we will be very careful about what we touch so we don't hopefully destroy anything or shock ourselves. All right, there's the relay click. Yeah, pretty much anywhere, huh? First thing I'm going to do is check ground screws because that doesn't really matter where I touch you. Yeah, it's kind of happening everywhere. So let me tighten up some of these screws and uh, see if that helps. But I'm not going to have it powered up while I do that. So let's power you down and unplug you again. And we'll tighten up some screws here. There are some ground screws. They are marked with arrows. Well, tightening up the screws didn't seem to do much, but it seems to be maybe localized kind of to the area of these connectors. So I'm going to try just removing and reseating these guys. Um, and if that doesn't do the trick, then it's probably time to take off the bottom and check for any weird solder connections down there, because that could also be part of the problem. So. 
that uh, that'll be the next step but let me try unseating and reseating a bunch of these connectors and see if that does anything for us all right well let's see if reseating any of these connectors did anything nope so I think it's time to take off the bottom and uh, see what the solder joints look like well before pulling the bottom I know I've watched other videos where this A-class board can be a problem um, these NEC parts in particular can have a uh, cold solder joint so I pulled the A-class board um, and they they do look a little funky I don't know how close I can get here for you to see it's basically all these connections right across here so I'm gonna go ahead and reflow those and uh, if that doesn't do it then the bottom cover is coming off okay so I reflowed those uh, solder connections on those big NEC chips on this A-class board and it is powered up and let's see what happens we are we are quiet that seems to have been the issue so I am gonna go ahead though still and open up the bottom and reflow there's a uh, similar NEC chips on uh, this main amp board and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bottom and uh, reflow those also um, and risk maybe totally destroying this thing but hopefully not so that's gonna be my next step here let's power you down and unplug you and we'll flip the beast over <sighs> This thing weighs like 60 pounds. And we'll take off the bottom cover. There are quite a few screws along the edge to take off the bottom cover, and I won't bore you with watching me take those out. All right, let's see what's awaiting us underneath here. One last screw to get out. Basically all the screws along the perimeter here. and. Let's see, oh, did we miss somebody? Oh, this guy here too. The black ones must have to come too. take out the black ones. Yep, I probably did, huh? These big guys need to come out too. So I have to give a special shout out and thanks to uh, 12 Volt Vids. He has a great video troubleshooting a no sound problem with this same amplifier. So he definitely gave me the inspiration to dive into this thing and try to fix it. Still one more right here too. They're hidden all over the place. All right, now maybe, huh? There we go. Okay, that is the bottom cover. Let's see what we can see down here. So yeah, these, these solder joints on these guys here look a little funky too. I am going to reflow those and uh, hope everything still works. Again, I won't bore you with the details of watching me solder. So I put the bottom cover back on and let's, uh, I put, put an FM antenna on here. I've got my bench speakers hooked up. So let's do a final test here before we button it all up. So we'll turn it on, wait for the relay to click in.
within two hours to go. Okay. And we have radios working. Some wildlife advocates worry this could open Sounds the door to legalizing hound hunting in Let's Washington. Let's go to some place where there's no input and we are not popping anymore. I would consider that a success and that wasn't even that hard to fix. So the problem seemed to be a poor soldered connection, poor solder joint on this uh, A-class board. And uh, if you have a similar problem, hopefully you found this video to be helpful. Thanks for watching.